Welcome again, Maxim here, and today we are gonna talk about gaining affinity. It can be obtained passively by simply completing missions that you have to complete anyways to achieve your goals, but you can also farm it. There are several options to do so, but before presenting them, let's start with the basics. To understand the leveling system in Warframe and be able to do it as efficiently as possible. In this video there are spoilers about the equipment from the quests you can see on the screen right now. Leveling up your equipment is the basic thing in Warframe. Regardless of whether you are doing this to increase your mastery rank or you want to use several formats, you should know the basics of this process. Let's start with how many experience points you gain by performing specific actions. By killing enemies with your Warframe skills, 100% of gained experience will be assigned to the Warframe. If, on the other hand, you use weapons, the affinity will be split in half, 50% to the weapon you are currently using and 50% to your Warframe. These are two of three basic rules related to the affinity system. The third rule is gaining experience when team members are killing mobs. In this case, your Warframe will get 25% of the experience from their kills and 75% will be distributed among weapons you have. If you have a full set of three weapons, each will get 25%. If you only have two of them, each will get 37.5%. And with only one weapon, it will get full 75%. If you want to level up your weapons, you should only take with you only those that really need affinity. Weapons with max rank still receive experience, so it will be wasted. As a curiosity, I would like to add that these yellow objects are called affinity orbs. By default, they give 100 experience points, which are distributed in as experience gained from teammate kills, 25 to 75. These are the three basic rules, but there are few more possibilities. You can for example use a Warframe that will have its own unique weapon called Exalted Weapon. Good example will be Excalibur here. This weapon is another part of your equipment, but the remaining weapons will not receive less experience. Exalted weapons get the same experience as Warframe but level up faster than your character, because like ordinary weapons it requires a 450,000 experience points to the maximum level. Warframe needs two times as much, 900,000. When using an exalted weapon, other weapons will still level up from experience gained from teammate kills. Killing with exalted weapon is counted as a skill kill. However, there's a situation where 75% of experience for your weapons is divided by 4. This happens when you equip an arc gun on a regular mission. To do that, you need to use Gravimag. With full gear, each weapon will receive 18.75% of experience gained from teammates. We can reduce the number of weapons, then 75% will be divided by 2, one necessary weapon without which we won't be able to start mission, and equipped arc gun. You can level up your arc gun only when it is equipped. You can also gain affinity on it on arcwing missions, or by using necromech. Here the rules are similar as in case of warframes. You kill with an arcwing or necromech, 100% of experience goes to them. Weapon kills, 50-50 is assigned to arcwing or necromech and this weapon. Teammate kills, 25% for arcwing or necromech, 37.5% for primary and melee weapon each. Necromech's unique weapons are exalted weapons, affinity gained the same as in Warframe case. Speaking of space missions, there are also railjack missions. Killing with railjack turrets will cause that all experience goes to the plexus. This is the segment that you level up in your railjack and put railjack mods in. On the other hand, destroying enemy vehicles with forward artillery gives experience points depending on how you do it. If being in Warframe, according to the previously mentioned rules, if you're in operator, 50% of the experience goes to the operator and 50% to the amp. Few more words about the operator, who gains experience just like Warframes. If kills with skills, gains 100% of the experience. Kill with the amp will cause 50-50 split between operator and amp. When it comes to the teammate skills, 25% goes to the operator, as before, but amp will receive only 37.5% because the other part is intended for the currently unused operator's melee slot. Last ones are companions. Your kills give them no experience, no matter how you do it. They receive as much affinity as the Warframe gains from the teammate kills. But this is not the shared experience. The equipped companion does not make your Warframe get less affinity. 
they just gain the same values from the source, 25%. If a companion kills with its skills, it gets 100% of that affinity. And when it uses some kind of weapon, like Sentinel or Hound, then like before the same rule applies, 50% to the weapon, 50% to the companion. On the mission progress screen, by default tab button, you will see how much experience you have gained so far, and what bonus you will get after the mission is completed. It amounts is equal to 125% of the experience points you have gained during the mission. If you want to gain points from teammate kills, they must be within the range of shared affinity. On regular missions, this distance equals to 50 meters. On open worlds, it is 250 meters. On Arcwing space missions, it is 300 meters. And on Railjack missions, this range is unlimited. Here you don't have to worry about sharing. But on other missions, you can increase that range in a few ways. First, you can use the main skill of the one operator skill, Vazarin. It increases the shared range by 25 meters. You can also use the flares that Nakak is selling on Cetus. For regular missions and open worlds, the range increases by 150 meters. In space on Arcwing missions, the flare increases range from 300 to 900. This effect lasts 2 minutes and you can use more than one flare on a mission. That is the theoretical basics about affinity. Now let's move on to the practice. Let's start with multiplying the experience you gain. First and best known method is Affinity Booster, that will multiply gained affinity times 2. You can get 3 day booster from sortie, 30 or 60 minutes booster from a rare container on almost every mission. But those boosters can also be purchased for platinum. At the market you have 3, 7 and 30 days variants for 40, 80 and 200 platinum. If leveling a lot of things, it is worth considering selling a few items from your inventory to the other players to buy such a booster to save your time. However, if you see such icon in the upper right corner of your screen, it means that a booster has just been activated on the server and it is available for all players. You can also use a purchase booster to increase the experience multiplier to 4. You can also get blessing on the relay from a player with 30 or higher mastery rank. It gives an additional 25% more affinity, so then you will have times 5 already. In addition, if you are leveling melee weapons, it is worth using Naraman Operator School, which main skill gives 45% more experience to melee weapons. And at the end of this list, we have Smetakavat. Its skill called Charm multiplies the experience you gain by 2. This effect can occur every 27 seconds and lasts for 2 minutes so there is a chance that this skill will overlap more than once. Duration of the charm can be increased with the Tech Enhance mod up to 155 seconds. So it's all about luck how many times this skill will overlap on your mission. I haven't mentioned the Silent Kills method yet, I'll get to it in a few moments. Apart from the fact that you gain experience particularly on every mission, there are several locations that are very profitable. For people who like spy missions, I recommend those on Pluto and Sedna, Oceanum and Kelpie. From each hacked point, without an alarm, you will get 24,000 affinity points, shared on your equipment as a teammate kills. If you have only one weapon with you, one mission, about 3 minutes, will give you a quarter of all affinity needed to max that weapon, so that translates to a 30 levels in 4 approaches. If you activate the alarm, you will get only 33% of the base affinity value. In this method, missions on Steel Path do not give more affinity. If you open relics on Void Fisher's missions, you can use equipment that needs to be leveled up. While opening the relics, you will meet maps that give more affinity than on regular missions. Finishing one approach doesn't take much time. You can also do endless missions with relics. Experience gained there will be increased because of the special multipliers. However, if you don't have relics and you like endless missions, you can visit Survival Selkie on Sedna or Gabi on Ceres. You will get a little less experience on the second location, but you can get Orokin cells there too. A good place to gain experience is Sanctuary Onslaught and its elite variant, but on that second one you can't take Warframe below level 30. Due to the fact that Gear Wheel is unavailable in Sanctuary, you cannot use Arcwings there. You can level them up using Necromex, Arcwings or on regular missions if you install Gravimac on them. Good place to do it is Defense Hydron on Sedna. 
if you want to level up your Warframe, Hydron will be a good option too, because without a good DPS on Sanctuary mission, you will not get as much affinity as on defense. However, if you have a good DPS in your squad, the Onslaught will give you more experience. Another suggestion is defense on Saturn, Helen. You will gain less experience there, but some players prefer to go here instead of Hydron. Why? Because Orokin cells dropping on Saturn. However, this is an option only if you are unable to farm cells in any other way. I highly recommend my video about farming rare resources. Everything is perfectly explained where to farm them. On Helen, you will drop small amount of cells and gain less affinity than in other places. Back to the Sanctuary Onslaught. When going on the Elite variant, I advise against being a Parasite. Take a character that will support a possible DPS if you want to level up your weapons. Do not stand idly by. Help with killing and you will gain more affinity. Supporting is also important. Besides, standing still for a minute will put you in the AFK state, so you won't gain any experience. There is one more interesting team experience firing method, although a bit forgotten. One player is a DPS. Next one is giving energy using Trinity. Third person is buffing DPS by increasing damage, power strength or adding some element to the damage. And the fourth person can also be buffed or be so-called Lich. That means he can take any Warframe and level it up, because nothing more is needed in this technique. So Lich can level up all equipment, the rest of the players, apart from DPS, can level up weapons and companions. To farm like this, you need to go Interception on Sedna, Berehenia, take two points with a slight advantage on your side, position yourself on this platform you see right here, it is more or less center of the map, and help DPS with killing. Sarin, Volt or another equally effective character can play this role. One round will take about 7 to 8 minutes. If you have a full set of weapons, you will max them in two rounds if you have a booster. Let's move on to the more advanced techniques. If you have used Equinox or seen it in action, you know that it can put mobs to sleep. Opponents in such a state are open to finishers and are not aware of what is happening to them. Silently killed enemies give a bonus for silent kills. It means 100% more experience. That bonus lasts 30 seconds and stacks up to 5 times. So, if you had an Equinox in the team that would put mobs to sleep for you, then by going on a mission with a good melee weapon, you are able to get level 30 from 0 in one attempt. Assuming, of course, that you do not lose the bonus through whole mission and you have booster. However, you can even use this method solo. When you access the Helmin system, you can do that using upgrade segment from Sun on Deimos. You will be able to transfer one specific skill from each Warframe to any other character. Helmint also gives you the opportunity to add a few new skills, but let's set them aside right now. The Equinox skill called Rest and Rage is what you need. When you transfer it to another character and place it instead of the first skill, you can go solo on the extermination, put mobs to sleep and kill them with a bonus. With a bit of luck and practice and Affinity Booster, you are able to level up your Warframe from 0 to level 30 after doing one time Adaro on Sedna without the booster after two times. One mission can be done in 4 to 5 minutes. Here's my sleep build for this method. The Helmin system gives one more interesting opportunity. If you sacrifice Banshee there, you can add her silence skill to other Warframes. If using this skill with an argument, you can fly through extermination like a tornado, killing everything with a strong and good ranged explosive weapon, such as Lens or Kuva Brahma, and having a booster, you are able to complete such mission in 2 to 3 minutes and max or almost max out your Warframe from level 0. This is the fastest method but much more demanding than Sleep Equinox. Here is the silent build from my Warframe. And here is the build for my Kuva Brahma that I used during this mission. Ok, we have a few smaller things left to discuss. Arcwings. The best for leveling up will be mobile defense on Neptune, Salacia. Keep in mind the rule that the more players in a team, the more mobs will spawn. So with a full squad, you can easily level up your arc wings and their weapons. Also we have Necromex. There are three ways to level them up. The first two are about Orb Valleys. First method is Thermal Fractures, a cyclical event during which you need to patch the terrain surface. To do this, you need containers with coolant. 
They drop from spiders that follow the exploiter orb near the Temple of Prophet. You can use four canister at the same time in one spot. So just throw them in and start defending. During this time you can level up your necromech. There will be waves of Eximus units from time to time, so this method can be more profitable. Another way, independently of the cyclical event, is taking over corpus bases. You need to kill Eximus unit residing in the base, it drops data unit, put it in the terminal of the facility and start the defense. You can take over two or three bases over and over again, and thanks to this you will be able to kill enemies that will spawn all the time. Fast, convenient and always available. The last method is leveling them on Railjack missions. Choose an endless mission, survival, defense or orphix venom, and you can equip your necromech when you enter enemy ship in the endless mission stage. The last ones are K-drives. For a long time the fastest method of farming experience was to do tricks. But some time ago there were some changes made in the animations and now it is more profitable to do races. Take out K-Drive on Orb Valleys and after using it you will see purple dots on your map. Hold M to open the big one. These are currently available races. Choose a convenient one and do it over and over again until you fully level up your K-Drive. At the end, as a curiosity, let me add that you can also level up by performing scans with your regular or Simaris scanner, but Simaris one will give you more experience through the widget with double scans. Scanning an ordinary object will give you 10 affinity points. Scanning an alerted enemy will give you 33% of the experience you would get after killing him. If, on the other hand, you scan unalerted enemies, you gain as much experience as by killing them. So the higher level of the opponent, the more points. And that's all in this video. The mastery rank topic is closely related to the leveling up, but this one deserves a separate episode. I hope that you are gonna like one or more of the presented methods. If you have any questions, please type them in the comment section or visit one of my streams. Link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Thank you for watching. Leave your reaction under this video if you liked it or not. I'd like to read your comments as well. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell. I also invite you to visit my Twitch channel, Maxim underscore land. Streams from Monday till Sunday at 5pm. See you next time, bye.